So if you're not on uh, if you're not in Eretz Yisrael right now, so you get the added benefit of watching the sunset behind me. You don't really get to see the sun, but you get to see dusk falling. <laughs> so you can feel a little bit like you're in the Holy Land. Okay. If you take it off, you'll take it off. If I take it off, then you'll take it off. Then I'll take yeah. the, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so we're only going to continue for another half Why hour. Why can't she just wash these? Yeah. Well, now now you can wash them, but you have all the old stuff. the old stuff. Right. I want the old stuff also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... What he's established so far, we're reading again from the from the duties of the heart, the gate of trust. And basically what we want to get out of this is how do you work with uh, your contribution to your necessary contribution to the world? Why is that trust? Okay. Why is that whole thing related to trust? Okay, so... So we read why you have to be a part of it, because Hashem, from the moment that reality has been set in motion, from the moment that Genesis ended, he says, there are two things that bring things into, into the world. One is God's decree, and the other aspect of it is that there are conditions or causes and contribution, contributions that have to come from the outside. And this is also by God's decree. Mm-hmm. So, if you want, the only difference between them is that in the first element, you have no contribution. In the second one, you do. So, it could come about, the reason I said that Zeva Zegorem is because it could come about, let's say you didn't do your part. Would it come about or not? Would it happen or not if I didn't do my part? Well, that, that's like Jews in America who say, I don't have to bring Mashiach. When Mashiach comes, I'll come to Israel. <laughs> so, so, so you're saying... they doing their part. Like, by, you so know, will it not happen? It will happen. 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 But they, so we tend to believe that it will happen anyway, that one of these reasons is sufficient to make it happen. Oh, and right, that's called beita. That even if you are not worthy, so still this reality will come about. Maybe that's not the in way, your lifetime, though. That's the way we tend to think about these things. That even if I don't contribute my part, there are certain things that will happen in reality. On the other hand, there is another side to this, which is where I do contribute my part. And each one of these is sufficient to cause the result to happen. Or that's not. What I said. <laughs> even if Hashem doesn't decree it, but I do my part? No, that's why he added that even in the system where my contributions are needed, it's by divine decree. Yeah. So Hashem is part of, part of it. Okay. Why do I need to add that it's by divine decree? Why don't I just say that on the one hand... Um, Hashem's going to do it, or I will do it. But either one of us doing it is enough. Why does he have to add by divine decree to my part of the To make sure you don't think you're doing it. Exactly. So that I understand that in the end, it's it awful. wasn't me, it was Hashem. <laughs> it's just that, like we said, mamash, that I'm contributing in a way that allows me to be part of the uh, party at the end, but it's not to my credit. Okay? It's sort of like I'm on the winning team, but I never scored a goal. So what did I do there? Well, I played. I did a lot of things, but I didn't bring the win. In the end, Hashem brought the win. And that's when I give the credit to Him. 
Okay, so he has to be involved in both sides. But now I want to skip skip the part about. Um, we're, skip, we're skipping to uh, to page four here. Okay, choice of occupation. Since it has been clarified the obligation that there is an obligation for a man to pursue the means for a livelihood because these causes, these conditions will not be completed if I don't do my part. It's on page 4, you found it? Mm -hmm. Now we will clarify that not every man is required to pursue every possible means. It's not a free-for-all. And this goes very strongly into our question that we keep on asking, how do I know what my mission is? Here, he's talking about Parnassa, he's talking about my livelihood as being one of my missions in life. He's not talking about the mitzvot that I do. He's talking about making a living. And Hashem wanted me to be a contributor to my making a living. And it's the same thing about everything that I do. I have to choose where I'm going to devote my energy. That's like saying I have to realize what my mission is. Okay? So he's going to tell us exactly what we've been discussing all this time. How do you find out what your mission is? And we gave all kinds of answers during the week, the past few months. And here's his. So he says the possible means are numerous. There could be many, many ways to earn a living. Some occupations are easy, requiring little strain, such as shopkeeping or light work with the hands, such as sewing, writing, contracting businesses, hiring sharecroppers or workers, supervisors, whatever. All these what we call easy work, right? That it's not, not that it doesn't take time, not that you don't maybe not sleep at night, but rather that the body is not involved in it. It's not hard labor. Some occupations require hard physical labor, such as tanning, mining, iron, or copper. Today we would say that it would be like the difference since most people don't do hard labor, uh, because we don't need hard labor, we have machines. But a lot of people can be divided between how much responsibility they assume. Meaning there are jobs that carry a lot of responsibility and there are jobs that carry less. Clearly the ones that carry a lot of responsibility, you carry the burden on your shoulders, it's like hard labor. It breaks the body down. You have to be a very strong, abled body to be able to carry the burden of a lot of responsibility. You don't have to be like that if you're just a, you know, a clerk in a, in a bank. The biggest problem you might face is that at the end of the day, $100 are missing. But if you're the bank owner, you may face the fact that billions of dollars are missing at the end of the day, or the week, or the month, or the year. So... You, we would divide it like that today. Not so much based on hard labor and soft labor, but rather on what amount of responsibility you have. For one who is physically strong and intellectually weak, okay, it is fitting to choose an occupation among those that require physical exertion according to what he can bear. He who is physically weak but intellectually strong should not seek among those, those uh, occupations that tire the body, but should instead tend towards those that are light on the body, and that he will be able to sustain. So first of all, you have to look at your conditions. What's your mission? It has to do with your conditions. It has to do with what you're capable of. Every man has a preference for a particular type of work or business over others. Now the important thing, God has already implanted in a person's nature, a love and fondness for it. This is very much against what people tend to say, if it's hard for you, that's where your tikkun is. Hard or not has nothing to do with it, as we'll see. Hard or not is something else. It's first of all understanding yourself. 
If you don't know what you're good at, you can't figure out what your mission is. It's just impossible. A person ha- he has to know himself to, to decide where his uh, shlichus, where his mission in life is. And most importantly, these tendencies are God-given. I take it further. You know, the materialists say, there's no such thing as Besheret. Why is there no such thing as Besheret? Because it has nothing to do with God. The fact that you fall in love or you are attracted to a certain type of person, that's uh, chemistry. One person's chemistry will make them suitable for this person, other ones won't make them. So they say in the end, they even, some people take it as being anti-romantic, they'll tell you that really there is no such thing as love, there's only chemistry. So even if you're a materialist like that, so fine. Who made your chemistry the way it is? That's, it doesn't matter what, where you point to. You're going to point at my psyche, you're going to point at my chemistry, you're going to point at, I don't know, <laughs> the color of my skin. If that's what causes me to become attracted to somebody else, fine be it. But in the end, Hashem put these tendencies in me. I don't have to run away from them. I have to accept them. That that is, Hashem is telling me what my shlichus is. I can't run away from my abilities. If my abilities tell me, (laughs) sort of like the Rebbe running away from his, I don't think he ever ran away from it. But here's a person who has a phenomenal memory, especially for people. What should he be? Well, he was also talented in a a variety of other areas in a crazy way, in an ingenious type of way. But in the end, he couldn't run away from his abilities. Even though he didn't want to become a rabbi, he became a rabbi. Because what do you want? You're suited for that mission. You're good for it. If you're good with people, stop running away from it. If you're good at listening, don't run away from it. <laughs> That's what you should be doing. Okay? It's because it's, it's God-given. He implanted in a cat's nature the hunting of mice, or the falcon to hunt smaller birds, the deer to trap snakes. I don't know what, he, what in the world he's talking about. <laughs> to read the Hebrew to, get, to understand what he even wants. I guess. Ayal. It's like a moose. More like, I don't know. To trap snakes. Some birds hunt only fish. And likewise, each animal species has a liking and desire for particular plants or animals which God has implanted to be the means for its sustenance. And the structure of its body and limbs is suited for that thing. The long bill and legs of a a fish-catching bird, right? That's the example in Chulin of, it's called a shalach. This, what we call something like an albatross, I guess, today. It's got a long beak, and it dives well into the into the water, and it fishes, or uh, uh, other things. <laughs> Pelican. <laughs> the long bill and legs of the fish catching bird, the shalach, or the strong teeth and claws of the lion, horns of the ox and ram, especially, etc. While animals whose sustenance is from plants, the herbivores, do not have the tools to hunt and kill. So imagine a herbivore trying to hunt down an animal. It just doesn't work. (laughs) Imagine a carnivore, right? Now eating plants. Similarly, you will find among human beings character traits and body structures suited for certain business or activity. One who finds his nature and personality attracted to a certain occupation and his body is suited for it, that he will be able to bear its demands, he should pursue it and make it his means of earning a livelihood. And now comes the important thing about getting over difficulties, he says, and he should bear its pleasures and pains and not be upset when sometimes his income is withheld. Rather, let him trust in God that he will support him all of his days. It will be this, if, if this is what I'm suited for, if this is my mission, Hashem will make it happen. Even if right now it seems to me that it's being withheld. I only have to pursue what I understand to be right. And even if it's a profession that's not so much 
Right. Exactly. This is what you're suited for. This yeah. is your mission. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like to write. And yet somebody that I respect told me, this is your mission. So I'm stuck. I can't make money the other way. It doesn't work. <laughs> Who says it's going to work that way either? So, so, as in, even, even, yeah, yeah, I think. But like he says, you have to bear its pleasures and pains. There's stuff about it that you like, and there are things about it that you don't. Certainly there's always, in every occupation, you can't love it all. In fact, I would argue that what you love about other occupations is that you're not really in them. And so you've never really encountered the pain involved. But every occupation, that's what, what he's saying here, has difficulties that you have to overcome, not necessarily in the occupation, but with yourself. Okay. That's one of the things that he mentioned, we didn't read it, but the, one of the reasons why Hashem made us party to Him in bringing about His decrees is, like we said, to test our psyche, to build our psyche. And so the, the main thing, as he's saying, is perseverance. is not to give up on whatever my vision is. Intentions when working for a livelihood, he calls this. There's no, there's no uh, titles, no headings in the original work, but this is what the translator added. What is it? Say it again. It's just a... Choice you're in the, you're in the Why in the turn? Ah. Yeah, intention. Okay. And he should have had intention when his mind and body is occupied with one of the means of earning a living to fulfill the commandment of the Creator to pursue the means of the world, to pursue the causes. And here causes is those things that I contribute to. Such as working the land, plowing and sowing as is written, and God took the man and placed him in Gan Eden to work it and to guard it. And also to use other living creatures for his benefit and sustenance, and for building cities and preparing food, and to marry a woman and have relations to populate the world. This should be the intention. Why am I doing it? Because Hashem commanded me to. My shlichus, my mission in life, has to be motivated by the fact that Hashem sent me here to do this. Not by the fact that I'm interested in the wealth that will come from it. Again, this is beginning to trust in Hashem. This is what it means to trust in Hashem. That I'm doing it because you commanded me to. And I trust that the moment that I persevere in what you entrusted me with, you say that that's Hashem's trust, or His faith at least in me, then He will provide, He has, that's what it means trust, it will be good, but as you understand it. He will be rewarded for His intentions, in heart and mind to serve God, whether or not His desire is accomplished. Now this is strange, what, what do you mean? Whether or not your desire is accomplished. What does he want to say? Somewhere in eternity, you'll you'll get rewarded. Or it's actually what makes me think of is the Alter Reb and Tanya Lama Day saying, "You need to draw the person with strong cords of love, and whether you are not, you makar them. You're you're rewarded for the other Israel that you put into it." So that's one option. The other is that our interpretation of success is different, maybe to Shem uh, Masiat or Tal. But then that, th but then that's not what. Uh, that's or not what we keep saying, that it has to be according to my understanding. No, it doesn't. Nobody, people don't get to feel that way. But, no, but and we keep saying that that's what trust means. That trust means that Hashem will do it the way I understand it. Oh. Not yeah. the way He understands it. Oh, I, I don't know about that. Who uh, has no, but that's, that was the whole premise. <laughs> that's what we've been describing all along. Well, maybe the desire of seeing it completely carried through to the end. Because there, is a, there has to be a space to know that Hashem is really making this happen. Okay. That sense of like really feeling, I did this, it's from me. Okay. That, that, that's the desire that's saying you. 
God. You mean, you know, like if I think I've, if, I, if I've done the right thing that God wants me to do, he shows me a rainbow on the wall. Because I just know that. I didn't ask for it. I didn't say, show me a sign. We've, I've just come to understand that if I'm doing something and I'm wondering if it's the right thing. No. That's a language I let's, understand. Let's read it again. So I'll read it in Hebrew and then maybe it'll well, that's be easier. not going to help me. He says, "V'yen iskar al kavanato b'hem le'elokim le'elokim b'hem le'elokim b'libo matzpuno ben shi'ugmar lo chavtzo ben shelo yugmar lo chavtzo." Kmo shneimar yigi akapecha ki tochal ashrecha v'tov lach. V'amur azal v'chol maasecha yu l'shem shemayim. So in the English, if you eat from the toil of your hands, you are praiseworthy. And it is good for you. So what is he saying? That, that, you, that you eat from the toe of your hands or you don't? That you, you succeeded or you didn't succeed? You did. You succeeded. Okay. So remember we talked, we never got a chance to see the Mishnah about it. But we talked about the fact that there is more in the spiritual world than there is in the physical. It doesn't mean that you will be left hurting. It means that not everything that you plan can come about. This, this is where this is misunderstood a lot of times. He's not saying that you have to accept it regardless of whether it's good or bad. That's not what he's saying at all. Okay? People understand that bitachon means that after something happens, I have to trust in Hashem that this is for the best. That's not what he's saying. This is not his line at all. This is not his direction. His direction, the original direction, is that it will be good except no one thing. That not everything that you can desire can actually come about in reality. And we talked about this, that from faith to will to intellect to sight, each time the window gets smaller. We said there's a Mishnah, this is all described in the Mishnah in, 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 uh, in Kalim, where it describes the movement of Tuma from one room to the next. And each time as it goes further in, the opening is smaller. Meaning it's enough to have a smaller opening. So this, so all the more so when it comes to good things, that they go through smaller and smaller openings. The, why does it go through smaller? Why do you just say it, 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 it gets, <laughs> it's the same size all the way through? Because it's telling you that each level of consciousness that it goes through, here it's our conscious determination from, from the amuna, from the faith, the vision that we have, to the, what we want, to what we understand, to what we can see, there's a lessening. Not everything that I can have in my vision of faith can actually be enacted in, in reality. That's, that's what he's saying. It's not that God forbid it comes out bad. No, it's just not the complete picture you were hoping for. So but it's how it? you understand good, but it, it's exactly how you understand the good, just not the complete good. You can't have... Not everything can come down into reality. Spirituality is bigger. But it's there. Because he's talking about here, first of all, there's intentions in heart and mind, and the, the desire is higher. Right. So perhaps we won't Where's desire? Keter, we won't experience Where's in desire? In so the word in Hebrew is chifetz. We, we never discussed this, but there's different words for will in Hebrew. We usually say ratzon. But there's also what we call chifetz. What's the difference between vatem tiuli eretz chifetz no Hashem? Hashem says... You will be for me a land that I covet, if you want. Chafetz. Chafetz. What's the difference? So, in, 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 in. Okay. so he says, what does it mean? It means you can want something, but not take pleasure from it. I can want things that I don't have pleasure from. But chafetz means that I want it, and my pleasure is enclosed within my will. That's what chafetz means. What is that? It says, for instance, that the Mashiach's mother's name is Chiftziba. 
my chifetz is in her. Why is he called that? Because that's what her husband says. Uh, the Mashiach's father, his name is Natan. That's what the Zohar says. Natan and Chifzima. So he says, Natan, he very much has his will, which is not just will, but pleasure and clothed within will in, in his wife. So really, this one, once the Rav gave this beautiful shira, the, the Rambam says, Imi amod melech mi beit David. If a king arises from the house of David. So David is equal to also Ohev. 14, they're both equal to 14. It's also you do Chabad. But here in this case, it's Ohev. So it says the Mashiach has to come from a loving home. Imi amod melech mi beit Ohev. Mi bait ohev. That's how we say today, a house that is full of Shlom Bais and, the, and, the, and the, the parents love each other. The Mashiach has to come from a loving home. He can't come from a broken home. It's not, it doesn't work that way. It, doesn't, it can't be from a broken home. It has to be from a place where Natan loves Chavtziba. Okay. So... So here what he's saying is the desire is that there's even pleasure in clothed in my will. He came from a broken home. What? He came from a broken David himself. No? That's why he's not the Mashiach. He's been David. Me bait David, but he's not David himself. David is plag Kisar. He's half, half a Mashiach. But apparently he's missing the, the final... Um, if you say that, about, about, uh, that there's a lot of a lot of work that's going on in, in the Tanakh itself about trying to find a good couple. Like, who's a good couple in the Tanakh? So the best one is still have, is Yitzchak and uh, Rivka. They're really a loving family. But <coughs> later on, it's Rabbi Akiva and his wife. They're the the example. Like, Rabbi Akiva and Rachel are the example of a loving home. So did they have any children or not? So that's a topic of debate whether they had any children. Well, but they were not separated. Or they, you know, they, were separated. they were devoted to the same cause. <laughs> devoted to the same cause. It's not distance makes the heart grow fonder. It's a good option. What? So that's again that's the cynicism that comes about today. That's why I explained it a lot of times. I explained this to you already. Huh? That it was a, it was a process. It was a process. So no, no. It's another time. Okay. So what he means here is that it doesn't matter whether all your vision of faith happens. What does, what will happen is whatever does come about is good. It's not that what comes about is somehow mm-hmm. negative. That's not mm-hmm. what he's saying at all. In this way. His trust in God will be intact, undamaged by the toiling and the means to earn a livelihood. And this is what's important, that even though you're contributing, what do you continue to feel? We said you continue to feel that it's trust in Hashem, not trust in yourself. That's the main key. As long as his intention in heart and mind is for the sake of heaven. If a person continues to do things the Shem Shemaim, Kol Masachayu the Shem Shemaim. All your acts are for the sake of heaven. Only then is his trust intact. Then why am I doing this? To do the will of God that the world be populated and built up. It's my shlichus. This is what it is. If I begin to work for myself, nobody promises me anything. It could, it could come out terrible. But if you're working for Hashem, the most that can happen is that not everything that you have a vision of can actually be Is this guy connected. on the fringe or is he... No, gen- he's talking about the mainstream. This is the mainstream for every person. This is the, the r- middle of the road. <laughs> now, the whole point here is that one should not think that his livelihood depends on a particular means. And that if these means fail, his livelihood will not come from a different means. What is he saying here? It's not that you, you, you don't change professions. Change your attitude. You, you, don't have, you, you have to <laughs> stick to your attitude. What will change is that the, like we said, there's the, 
like that's why he gave the mashal in the beginning. There's the bucket that's drawing out the water, and there's the person pulling at the end. <laughs> what exactly in the middle? What is happening in the middle that can change? So in one generation you've got these oxen and then wheels and then that. In another generation you've got keyboards and you've got this and, and, and everything works in a different way. The means will change. So don't think if there's no electricity you can't make money. You'll still make money. Don't worry about it. If this business contract didn't work, so some other one will. If this account left, something else will come around. He can provide, sorry, rather trust in the Almighty, know that all means are equal for him. For him, whatever sibot you put in the middle, doesn't matter. He can provide using whatever means at, and at any time and however he so wishes. As is written, for with Hashem there is no limitation to save with many or with few. It says, Ki en la Hashem lo shia beravo bimat. And again, this is, this is where trust comes in. Because you can say, who am I to be able to do so and so? He says, it doesn't matter. If this is your mission, you will succeed. Whether, you, whether you're going to start your Beit Chabad with $10 or with $10 There's no difference. Because the main thing is your trust in Hashem. That's such a... I mean, it's such a, 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 a... If you follow Shluchim, you see it so much. I don't know if a Shalich will start with 10 million. Never heard of that. <laughs> but I have heard of people who started with $10. Mm-hmm. Did they end up with more when they finished? Not necessarily. I don't think so. But, all the most but look at what they did. I don't know if they're ten million, even 10 million dollars in debt. I look at what they did. And I say, could I put a, a dollar value to what they did? No dollar value to it. Everybody ends up the same. That's not the question. Right. Right. It's like, so you're driving, you know, we all get in the end a two by four. <laughs> two feet by four feet that you live in, in the end. And they're all the same. So you end up, when you start with zero, you end up with zero. It's all, it's all the same. The question is, what did you, you can start with $10, and make millions and billions and lose it all, it's fine. Because the question is, what did you do with it in the middle? And that's shlichus. That I'm not interested in what it will be left over in the end. What I'm interested in is that the vision happens. That whatever from the vision can come down will come down because I'm serving Hashem. That's it. And, and again, it's such a hard thing to, to break because we're sold the delusion. If you watched uh, Monday's class last mm-hmm. week about delusions, the world sells us a, cra- a crazy delusion that everybody's bought into. That it's all about you need me, says the world. Right? You need me. It's the other way around. The world needs me. <laughs> I don't need the world. It's when, when you start understanding that, that, that don't be the female in this, in this uh, partnership. Don't be the one who's serving the world. The world is here to be the place in which you complete your mission. And it doesn't matter whether it's huge or small, whatever it is. Don't feel that you're a servant to the world, because then you're going back on it's Yat Mitzrayim. You're a servant to Hashem, not a servant to the world. Okay. So let's just finish this. It's, it's all quotes from here on. He can provide using whatever means. Ben Rav Ben Mat. Many are with you. But you must remember Hashem your God. Okay, and this is the famous, uh, the famous Zikaron, Schira, remembrance that Reb Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev calls the remembrance of Eretz Yisrael, which is that he is the one that gives you strength to make wealth. Okay. In order to establish his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers, as it is this day. What does it mean? He gives you the strength to do to do chayim for the breach, for the covenant. What's the covenant? The covenant is the foundation for the trust, for the trust that you have in Him. It's a trust pact that Hashem made with Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Started from Avram where he said, 
And it ends with each one of us in the covenant that we have with Hashem. And the covenant is 100%. And if I follow what my mission in life is, He provides, period. Yeah. Okay, so this is how the, this is one small thing from the Chovot of the Lord. There's a lot more, and I really recommend that uh, you look it up on the internet, you'll find it, and uh, you'll see a lot of what we've been talking about. Just look.